The work is really focused on studying uh, immune health and survivors of DLBCL, which is a really understudied topic. We know a lot about other issues that affect DLBCL survivors, uh, but not much by the immune health. And there's reason to think that that would be an issue because, of course, DLBCL is a lymphoma or a cancer of the immune system, and the treatments we use for DLBCL directly target the immune system um, or at the very least have profound indirect effects. So I think there's reason to believe that the immune system in survivors may not be normal, um, and this may lead to um, problems fighting infections and also immune dysregulation causing immune deficiencies and autoimmune conditions. So in our case we turned, uh, this is a population health study, we turned to the California Cancer Registry and derived a, a cohort of breast, uh, sorry, cohort of uh, DLBCL survivors and compared them to survivors of breast cancer, prostate cancer, head and neck cancer and melanoma and looked for the incidence of immune related conditions during survivorship and we defined that as the period one to ten years after cancer diagnosis. Um, so when we did this using a Poisson regression model uh, for a set of diagnoses um, that were sufficiently incident in the data set and that were immune related, meaning that they were infections, autoimmune conditions, or immune deficiencies, we found that the DLBC DLBCL survivors across the board in all four comparisons had significantly increased risks of several immune deficiencies, autoimmune conditions, but pr um, prominently of infections. And interestingly, a lot of those infections were um, viral or fungal, specifically viral and fungal pneumonia, uh, but also bacterial pneumonia, except in the case of the comparison to head and neck survivors, where bacterial pneumonia was more common in the head and neck cancer survivors. Uh, we did a few additional analyses to study this data further. Um, we looked for um, broader categories of diagnoses, looking at more diagnosis codes, and found similar results, again, across all four um, comparisons. We also looked at the influence of systemic chemotherapy by comparing only to breast cancer patients who had received chemotherapy, just to control for whether um, exposure to systemic therapy might be driving these excess risks of immune-related conditions. And we found um, that there was no difference in the um, incident rate ratios when we compared uh, DLBCL survivors to the full breast cohort or just to breast cancer patients who had received systemic chemotherapy. So we don't think that systemic chemotherapy is what is driving these risks. And we did similar sensitivity analyses looking at um, the role of stem, stem cell transplant in DLBCL patients, and there also we didn't find a significant interaction. Um, and finally, we looked at uh, cumulative incidence of these, uh, some of these conditions in the DLBCL survivors compared to the other uh, cancer survivors, um, and saw that there's significant uh, cumulative burden of these excess risks over time, um, suggesting that there really might be some clinical significance to this if the data bear out.